This is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right, good morning, everybody. So I was going to talk briefly about uh, the humeral I.O. and a couple just little tidbits about that. So, you know, the tibial I.O. is probably our first uh, go-to site if we need an I.O., uh, but there are times, whether it's because of trauma to bilateral lower extremities or because of a failed tibial I.O. or maybe because of infection or amputation that we can't use the tibial site. So a good alternative to know is the humeral, the proximal humerus. So a couple things about it is uh, first when we're picking the needle, we should go with the longest needle. Um, it can be difficult in people that uh, are obese, whereas the you know, proximal tibia is almost always uh, pretty superficial. The humerus can be hard to palpate and hard to get a needle to. So the longest needle is the one to go to. And then um, about finding the location, uh, having the hand uh, internally rotated and adducted, so basically the patient's hand uh, sitting on the umbilicus makes it much easier to find the site. And to find the site, you're looking for the uh, greater tuberosity or the greater tubercle of the proximal humerus. And a couple of things have been described about trying to find it is um, kind of run, running your thumbs up the humerus, so basically starting distally and then working your way up. And you're kind of trying to feel, some people describe it as like a golf, uh, golf ball on a tee. And uh, kind of right where the ball would meet the T is kind of the bot or the surgical neck or the bottom of the greater tuberosity. And then you go about a centimeter above that. Sometimes people also describe kind of taking your hands and cupping the kind of proximal humerus. And then just where your thumbs kind of sit is where you might find the greater tuberosity. And then a couple things I want to talk about was, you know, once you find that, the angle of insertion isn't straight in. It's supposed to be 45 degrees down, 45 degrees basically towards their feet. And then the kind of the big thing that I want to talk about is once you get it, and, you know, it's great that we have the I.O. line, keeping the proximal humerus line can be a little more difficult because the tendency is to move the patient's arm around during resuscitation or procedures. And if you externally rotate that arm again, you're likely to lose that line. So it's real important to kind of keep that arm internally rotated. Some people talk about putting a sling on the arm, taping the hand to the abdomen so it doesn't get moved around. And then if you need to move the arm around for a procedure, like let's say you put a chest tube on that same side, you can keep that arm internally rotated and just kind of abduct it with the kind of arm still internally rotated. So those are kind of a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, like I said, it's a good line to use. It can actually infuse, they say, a little bit faster than the proximal tibia. Um, but it uh, can get lost if we don't pay close attention to it. Any questions, comments? All right, thank you guys. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.